most welcome to Historia Spanana, History Reconnaissance. This is the story of the Transcontinental Convoy in 1919. The Motor Transport Corps of the US Army, traveling with 72 vehicles, 250 men and 50 officers, on the historic Lincoln Highway across the North American continent, from Washington DC to San Francisco in two months. In World War I, horses and mules provided much of the motive power for the ground forces. At the end of the war, this began to change. Large vehicles of considerable power were being developed. Though, sometimes a lot of effort was needed to keep them on the move. Much of the large-scale movement of forces depended on railroads. The 40 and 8th was a standard accommodation for the US Doughboys moving to the front. 40 men or 8 horses, or in French, 40 hommes, 8 chevaux. In 1919, an important pioneering experiment got underway. 72 US Army vehicles set out to establish a first in army movement. A military convoy from coast to coast, from Camp Mead in Maryland to San Francisco. Sunday, July 20th was a day of rest. Most of the enlisted men were treated to Sunday dinner at the homes of Chicago citizens. Along the way, certain structural modifications were necessary. Beyond the Mississippi, the convoy followed trails worn into the prairie by the Conestoga wagons long before. Camping along the same route that the Western pioneers had followed. The convoy crossed the Missouri River into Omaha, Nebraska and paraded through the city. Then it was time to change several badly worn solid tires. Later on, dinner for officers and refreshment and dance for the enlisted men. Each day's moment brought the same difficulties the early settlers had known unforgiving terrain and the unending distances. Sometimes the pace was slow, other times it was stopped dead in its tracks. The British encounter was often substandard or no standard at all. A lot of detours had to be made, and sometimes it was just a narrow escape. On August 14th, it was just bad and dusty roads all day. Four weak wooden bridges reinforced, and another four detoured, before reaching Green River, Wyoming in the evening. Nothing stopped the convoy for long. Deep ruts were filled with sagebrush. And they continued. Digging, towing, constantly repairing broken radiators, carburetors, wheel bearings, gaskets, cylinders. All the time with the goal San Francisco on the horizon. Now came the Rocky Mountains, the Rockies. A real challenge for the convoy. Very narrow roads with continuous sequences of UNS turns and extremely steep grades. Unprotected fields, dropping off hundreds of feet. Finally, they were over the top, 
and the men felt that from now it was just a downhill run. Carson City, Nevada. Sunday 31st of August was a rest day. Tire changes were performed. A bus was provided for at the hot springs and religious services were held. The following day would see the convoy cross the CRS and into California. The final days were a real treat. Hard surface roads. Dinners, dance and barbecue in the evenings. Still, the same repairs and problems with vehicles, but morale was high and finally the convoy crossed the San Francisco Bay on two ferry boats from Oakland. San Francisco, California, 11.30 am, September 6, 1919 and the end of the trail. The convoy paraded through the city to Lincoln Park. Medals were presented to entire personnel by the Lincoln Highway Association and the convoy was formally received by Colonel R. H. Noble and Mayor James Rolfe. A milestone marking the western terminus of Lincoln Highway was dedicated. Now, all that remained was to celebrate. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.